Hello, I'm Johnny Tucker, editor of Blueprint, and welcome to the Blueprint Innovation Interviews at ARPA. We have four interviews for you, and we'll be talking about the essential nature of innovation and what it does for architecture and practice. Well, I think a lot of the times when you talk about innovation, people make a distinction between innovation and invention. So innovation to me is not necessarily something that is brand new. So it can be something that's based on organizational ideas, disciplinary knowledge. Uh, it can work at a multiplicity of different uh, levels. Obviously, as you work within the academy, you want the work of the academy to have certain innovative dimensions. That is, in some ways, the driver of the way in which you, you think through questions of pedagogy, research, and practice within the academy. Innovations happen when people look at certain things in a much more focused manner. It's very difficult to be innovative just by trying to do lots and lots of things and to actually treat things in a superficial fashion. So part of the idea of innovation within the academy is that you take a certain body of knowledge and you really delve into it much more deeply. Partly it's also a situation where the nature of our discipline is changing and you actually um, arrive at new forms of innovation from the cross-fertilization of different disciplines, from interaction uh, at the borders or across the, 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 a variety of different disciplines. So I, I think there, there are many ways in which today we really need to consider innovations in, 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 in both uh, practice and uh, in terms of what happens within the academy. For example, think about urbanization. Urbanization today requires a different kind of response than the idea of master planning. And so we need to think how are the, what are the alternative ways in which we deal with, for example, rapid conditions of urbanization through alternative strategies than simply what we inherited from modernism in terms of master planning. So that opens up the question of what other strategies are there. The role of the academy needs to uh, change. The academy is not just a place where people go to learn a certain set of practices, a, a body of knowledge. Of course they have to do that, but they also go to the academy to use the academy as a center of uh, investigation, as a center of discourse that, for example, is concerned with a whole set of issues, themes, topics that we face as a society. Therefore, the link between the academy and societal transformation, societal needs, is a key part of what we face. Those conditions, those needs, those necessities, then require innovative responses. So in part, it's true that we are responding, our innovations come as a result of our response to how society is changing. But in order for us to be able to respond to those conditions, we also need to transform, to innovate our own practices because our, a lot of the time, our historical practices are simply not good enough, if you like. They don't have the capacity to respond to the new conditions that we find. So it's a, it's a two-way situation for me. It's partly that we are responding to societal um, situations, and as a result of that, we're also changing our own practices in order to have the capacity to respond to the, the conditions. Those sort of reciprocities between situation and response are, for me, key components of conditions for, for, for the production of innovation. At the GSD, sometimes we talk about the idea of disciplinary knowledge and transdisciplinary practices. Disciplinary knowledge means that we have the responsibility, we're interested in enhancing the knowledge of a certain discipline. Transdisciplinary practices, it also means that people from a variety of different practices coming together and utilizing the knowledge of these multiple disciplines to now construct new forms of knowledge at the intersection of those disciplines. This is nothing terribly new. In a way, most um, good contemporary practices work like that. Teams of architects work with landscape architects, work with planners, work with engineers, and so on and so forth. But actually, the academy 
doesn't necessarily work like that because the academy is, is historically been based on disciplinary knowledge and therefore it's more of a silo. So how do you, given the kind of boundaries of departments, of disciplines and so on, also create some uh, version of what happens in the real world in practice as kind of incubator model of pedagogy that I think is by itself something different and something innovative. The role of the, the academy in one sense is therefore to be responsive to societal issues, to enhance its own knowledge of specific disciplines and to construct frameworks of collaboration that can justly respond to the needs of society while recognizing always that the academy is not real practice and therefore some level of tension, some level of disjunction, the recognition of that is itself also potentially quite productive in terms of the way in which it can enhance or produce new forms of creativity precisely because of the fact that there is a slight detachment from reality. The intention of having multiple disciplines within one school has been there from the beginning. I think what we are trying to do now is really to break the idea of the silos of the different uh, disciplines by getting people to have opportunities to work more closely together. By the way, this is not something that I would recommend for everybody. It's just that I think the opportunities need to be there. We try to invite people as part of our lecture program. We try to have exhibitions that build on the role and importance of, um, of collaboration. So it's, it's not necessarily one thing, but actually you need multiple things at multiple scales to enable uh, new forms of collaboration. In response to uh, the idea that innovation is, uh, is, doesn't really um, occur within architecture but exists uh, uh, outside of the discipline and in the discipline in a way is responding to, uh, to innovation, I think that that's, that's partly true. Uh, it's not a secret that the way, for example, uh, digital technologies, uh, social media has evolved the rate of, uh, of of uh, progress, the rate of development is so vast compared to the kind of incredibly slow rate of progress or development of modes and methods of practice within a discipline like architecture. That is, that is obviously clear. But I think precisely because of the fact that things are happening in society, we also have the responsibility to see what will be our reaction to those conditions and it is our reaction to those conditions that produces innovation on the one hand. But if we look at the disciplines themselves, we can also speak of innovation within the discipline by looking at the organization of, of practice, by looking at certain uh, issues related to, for example, the way in which drawing occurs or questions of projection occur or the way in which we make uh, certain parts of our projects and so on. Sometimes our response to uh, certain circumstances change our habits within practice which also result in certain kinds of innovation in terms of the interrelationship between design and perception for example. And so there are many, many ways in which we can speak of the need within the discipline itself to also consider uh, being more innovative in terms of um, how, how we work and how we practice.